Hi everyone, I'm going to run through the 3ds Max interface. So to start with, you've got main menus up the top, then you have a main toolbar, then you have a modeling ribbon, over here you have your layer and scene explorers, where you can view what geometry you have in your scene and organize it. On this side you have the command panel where you can create and modify geometry. Then you have four main viewports here. So by default you've got the top, front, left and perspective viewports. And then to maximize any of those you just want to select it to view this yellow box and then use Alt W to maximize it. And from within there you can choose to change what that viewport is. So for example, changing it from top to perspective. Then in terms of navigation, you can use your middle mouse button to pan, or you can use alt and middle mouse, which will allow you to orbit. You also have more fine grained navigation options down here, which you'll use when you've got a camera set up and you want to change this angle very specifically. When you open a scene, you want to check what units you're working with. So for that, I'm going to come up to customize and go into unit setup. And you can see here I'm working in meters. And then when I choose to come into the system unit setup, you want this to read as the same as whatever the display unit is. So it's good. They're both in meters, which is appropriate for our purposes. And then you can see here that this grid is displaying 10 meter squares so each of these lengths are 10 meters and if I want to hide this grid I just use the the G key to turn it on and off so then coming over to our command panel you can see that we've got a series of create options and I can create different sorts of stuff in max so to start with I can create geometry and then I can also create shapes. So geometry will have faces, whereas shapes will only consist of line work. And then you have the option of creating lights and cameras, and then also helpers, and you can modify the settings of those. So within geometry, you've got a pull down menu of the types of things you can create. We'll start just with the standard primitives and you have a series of options. So to create a box, I'm just going to choose box and then just drag out and then orbit. Um, and then after you've created something, you can select it by clicking on it and coming over to the modify panel. Within this, you can change the parameters of the object. So for example, I can change, however, using tab to go from one setting to the next, I can change how many faces it's made up of. I can also change the specific parameters of its size. And then to zoom in on that, I just selected it and hit the, the Z key, which zoomed right into the object. So coming back over here to the, the layer, Explorer, you can see that I already had a layer created called boxes and that's what it was created onto. If I wanted to create another one of these, I can have it selected and then I've got the move command selected up here. So with that, I can use any of these axes selected to move the object. And I can hold the shift key to create a copy of that. And I'm just gonna create a pure copy of it. That will again be created in this layer. But if I wanted to create another layer from these, I can select them both over here, create layer, and that's gonna put it on a new layer, um, which I can delete this one and then rename this. You also have the Scene Explorer here, which is set up to list the objects by hierarchy. So it's just listing what all of the geometry in the scene, whereas this is organizing it according to layers. You can here um, change which layer is active. You can also freeze the layers, or you can use the eye to hide the layers. So returning to 
what the options are up here. You've got options of selection, moving, rotation, and scaling. These are the Q, W, E, and R keys on the keyboard. So if I select Q, whenever I drag, it's just going to create a window. If I pull down just with my left mouse button on this option here, I can change the way that it's selecting. So here it's using a circle. With this option, I can draw, um, draw out a polygon to select by. And then with this option, I can spray to select, which can be useful if you have a lot of polygons in your scene. And then if I hit W, I would activate the move command as I was using before and I can move the object according to these axes. You can also select these squares to move according to two axes at once. Then you have your rotate options, which will rotate the object according to the selected axes. And that's the E key, and then the R key will activate the scale command. So pulling down on that, you'll see that I've got the select uniform scale option here, but you've got other options, such as non-uniform scales. And then you can right click on any of these to be able to enter the specific digits of these. So say I need my um, object to be 200% larger than I started it with. I can just enter, uh, 200 in all of the axes, and that's uh, what I'm going to end up with. You also have your snap options in this toolbar, so I can select to activate these, but I also need to right click to see what snaps I want to have turned on or not. And then when I go to move, because I have the grid point selected, it's going to snap to each of those as I move. from where you start. It's also useful when you're creating objects because it will snap to each of those points. So then I should have a 10 meter by 10 meter by 10 meter box. You can change these to snap from say the end points. So if I were to create another object, I can create one from an end point of one object to another, like so. And then another option you have next to it, the shortcut for the snaps is the S key. Next, you can use um, your angle snap toggle, which will be useful when you're rotating. So I'll turn off my main snaps. And then I have my angle snaps activated. And then every time I turn, it's rotating by five degrees as those yellow values are reading out. And if I wanted to change the amount that it was rotating by there, I would change that option in the snap settings. So I could change it to 10. And then every time I rotate, it's going to be by 10 degrees instead of five. 